welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a couple of these old whiskey barrel tops and make a shelf that will hold some whiskey bottles and a nice display on the wall. There's a lot of projects that you can do with old barrels that you may have lying around. This is going to be the first of a series where we make things out of barrels. So let's see how this turns out. So let's go. So here's the general design that we're going for with this project. We'll have one full round top that will be the back of the shelf. Then we'll take another half of a barrel top and we'll attach it like so. Then we'll put a little metal ring around the edge to hold the bottles in place and hang this thing on the wall. I've had mixed experiences using barrel tops for projects. That's why I don't use them very often. They often don't go back together exactly like they are supposed to. You can see here we have some pretty major cracks. And a lot of times the way they put these together, if you do take them apart, you can never quite get them back together the same way. So that is going to be the unique challenges that we'll have to work through for this project. The first thing I wanna do is just take a scraper and get some of these old stickers off. We have some staples and we have a nail here. This is where they actually drill through to test what's in the barrel as it's aging. So once I get this cleaned up a little bit, I'll give it a light sanding so we can see what we're working with underneath this patina of wood. I gave this top a light sanding and these things, they expand and contract a lot as they get wet and when they have liquid wood in them and when they are retired and they dry out. Because of that, I do have some spots that have some pretty big cracks here where one of these top pieces has warped very badly. However, this is meant to be a rustic looking piece and I think that I can work around that crack in the wood. The next thing I need to do is figure out how I'm going to permanently attach these pieces together so they don't come apart. As I've mentioned before, I've never had much luck trying to pull one of these apart and put it back together and glue it. When you start gluing things up, things don't align correctly. The wood absorbs a lot of the moisture in the seams, causes a big mess. And due to the nature, how some of these are constructed, they can be almost impossible to get back together. I've lucked out a little bit with the barrel tops that I've chosen to work with today. They're held in place with these dowels. Now I could try to squeeze some glue in between each piece and clamp it together. However, most barrel tops also have a reed in the middle which expands and contracts when the barrel is filled with liquid, making it waterproof. This just acts as an extra seal in between the pieces. So even if I were to get some glue in between each piece, I would probably just be gluing it to this reed and wouldn't get a positive connection. So I'm gonna use a different method to hold my barrel top together, which will also act as an extra piece to help hang this to the wall with a French cleat. What I'm gonna do is take a scrap piece of another barrel top and I'm gonna rip this into about two inch strips. I'll put one strip at the top that will become a French cleat to hang this on the wall and I'll put one strip at the bottom. Each strip is gonna have screws that go into each one of these barrel top pieces. That'll help hold everything together without the need to put wood glue in each crack. Next thing I'm gonna do is run these through my jointer on one side. This way, when I attach them to the barrel and this thing is resting on the wall, it'll lay nice and flat. Next, I'm gonna take each piece with the jointed side down on the planer bed and just run these through my planer just to make sure that they're nice and flat on both sides. All right, I've got my back piece here. I've got my one lower piece that'll be a strip that I'll put screws in to help hold this back piece in place and hold it together. And I've got my top piece, which of course is a French cleat. I've got my 45 degree angle on there so that when I go to hang the shelf on the wall, it'll hang nice and level and flat. Next thing I need to do is sand this shelf piece. What I don't want to do is sand it so much that I take that patina away and leave the white oak looking pretty normal. I want to leave some of that patina on the wood so that it has some character. I'll work my way up to about 120 grit and I'll just take my time doing some sanding, which I know everybody loves. One thing to note is I had to do a lot of hand sanding. This isn't perfectly flat and oftentimes with barrel stuff, nothing's perfectly flat. It's all got curves and bends and twists and warps. So you might need to account for some time to hand sand. I've got my first back brace cut to length. This will be the bottom brace 
Before I attach this, I just want to use my 1 8 inch round over bit and go around all the edges of this just to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm ready to start drilling my pilot holes for the brace piece on the back. I did go ahead and lay out a grid to make sure that all my holes are nice and straight and consistent across the back. I took some time to put a piece of wood here to hold this piece flat down so that this doesn't warp and bend. And I took a couple of clamps to just kind of compress this together as much as possible. Now I'll just line this up where I'd like it. Start with a couple of holes. And I want to get a couple of screws in these just to hold this piece in place before I drill the next set of holes. When I countersunk these holes, I used a 3 8 inch counterseek drill bit. That's a little bit bigger than I actually needed for the screws. One reason for that is I'm going to actually fill all these with a oak dowel. When I do this, I'll just put a little glue in the hole, take my dowel, make sure that the wood grain is lined up with the rest of the wood grain, poke it in a little bit, and then I just like to use a non-marring rubber hammer, give it a couple of taps, and after that's had a chance to dry after a few minutes, I'll come back with a belt sander and sand these all down. When, once this is on the wall, you're never gonna see this, and little details like this are never gonna be seen by most people. However, when they open it up and they see the quality and the little touches that you put on here, it just helps set your piece apart. So it takes a couple of extra dollars to do this, a few extra minutes, but 100% worth it in the quality of the end product. Next, I'm gonna start putting the shelf together. This shelf will be attached to our wall piece. We have the same issue with this piece as we did with our wall piece, where this is gonna to wanna to come apart. I finished the bottom of the shelf. I took a scrap piece of barrel stave, marked out my holes, pre-drilled, plugged them, glued them. Next, I'll just take my belt sander and sand all these down. And that just leaves everything looking nice and clean. The other thing I've done is temporarily attach the other piece of the top French cleat to the wall, nice and level. Now I can just put this on the wall. I'll just make a little tick mark. Then I can take my level, line it up with my tick mark and draw a straight line all the way across. And I'll know that is where the top of my shelf will go. I really hope this works out. I'm out here in my whiskey barrel graveyard with my piece of shelf that I just created and I'm sifting through these barrel rings to see if I can find one that will match the curvature close enough to this to create a border around the shelf. That way when we put whiskey bottles on the shelf, they don't fall off onto the floor. I'm just taking these and just lining them up. And I think we actually have a pretty good fit with this one. Next, we'll take this inside and we'll cut it to length and we'll figure out what to do next. I... I don't really do metal work. I did make a mark on my piece of steel here. I've got a grinder with a cutoff wheel. I have it plugged into an outlet and the plan is to cut on that line and see what happens. I think that went pretty well and so far nothing's caught on fire. I also took the grinder, smoothed down the edges and rounded off all the corners. Next, I'll take some full-size barrel staves and I'm going to cut them down to five inches in length. I'll need four of these to hold the metal rail in place. I have my four pieces cut to length, now I'll just sand them. One thing to note, I did use the end piece of each of these staves, so I have a place to connect it to the barrel top when we screw this all together. The next thing I want to figure out is how I'm going to attach these to the rim of the shelf. I want to use the notch that is naturally cut into the end of the barrel stave, which would naturally fit onto the top. I put where I want to pre-drill my holes. Next, I need to figure out where they're going to be placed on the edge of the shelf, pre-drill some holes straight through, and then screw this in place and see how this goes. And I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I didn't clamp it or anything when I screwed it because this stave is naturally meant to fit into this barrel top. Just put two screws in each one, and then I'll plug these holes with the same oak dowels that I've been using for the rest of the project. Three more to go. So I've got my four edge pieces for my shelf all on there and connected. Now I need to figure out how I'm gonna attach, attach this metal band piece that will be the border that holds all of the bottles on the shelf. I just got this back from the engraver. Thanks, Keith. I have this custom engraved with logo, Goose Point. I hope you love this, Bob. Next thing I'm gonna do before I finish putting all the pieces together is finish it with a little polyurethane. For this, since it does have a lot of these cracks and stuff like this, I'm just gonna use a rattle can 
I'll put a couple of coats on it. Uh, we'll let it dry and then we'll get back to assembly. The next thing I need to do is take this metal barrel ring piece and put it around the edge of our shelf so that whatever glasses or favorite drink that we put on the shelf will not fall onto the floor. To do this, I'm gonna use some little bitty clamps. I'm gonna clamp it in place where I want it. After it's clamped in place, I'll mark where I want a couple of holes, then we'll attach it using some one inch screws. One expert word of advice, flip the shelf upside down when you do this. That way everything stays nice and level to your, your top. Plus it just kind of is easier to clamp it in place with everything resting on your work surface. One other thing, I wanted to make sure these clamps weren't in the way when I go to mark my holes and drill them. So I put them off just to the side so that I can draw a nice straight line straight down and find the location for the holes for my screws. This turned out really great. I got two one inch sheet metal screws in each of these. This thing's rock solid, it's not going anywhere. Next, I need to attach this assembly to the back piece that we made. This next part's crazy. I don't even know if I can explain it right. I'm gonna give it a shot. I first clamped this piece of plywood to the back of my base. Then I took my shelf and using some clampage here in some odd areas, was able to clamp this shelf right up to that piece of plywood. Now I can drill a couple of pilot holes, which will go straight through this plywood, through the back and into my shelf. Of course, I forgot to take into account that once I drill these holes, I need to get this plywood off. So what I'm gonna to attempt to do now is actually put a screw in one of my pilot holes. I undid the clamp on one side. I'm hoping that I can rotate this piece of plywood out of the way enough where I can put another screw in the back, take this screw out and rotate it back. And hopefully somehow it magically all stays lined up. That didn't work. This piece of plywood was so far up next to this that I couldn't get it out of the way enough. So I just undid the screw held it in place the best I could with my hand and did a full send and it worked out. Now that I've got a couple of screws in the back, I'm just gonna put five or six more. The screws I'm using for this are three and one eighth inch GRK cabinet screws. They have a big washer on the back of them. I think they'll be plenty sturdy to hold this shelf on. And here you have it, your very own whiskey barrel, whiskey shelf. Bob, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get lots of use and enjoyment out of this shelf. Can't wait for you to have me over for a drink. Subscribe below, click the like button if you like the content so YouTube knows that I should make more stuff and we'll see you next time. Thank you.